Welcome back to my channel and to another review. Today I'm going to be talking about a book that wasn't on my TBR, I wasn't planning on reading, I wasn't planning on reviewing. That's a great intro, right? So today I am simply jumping on a bandwagon again, it happens every now and then, with The Woman in the Window by A.G. Finn. So what happened was that I've heard about the book a while ago, but it never interests me, it just seemed like one of those throwaway airplane thrillers that you just kind of read to pass the time, but then recently I've seen the trailer for the movie, and the movie seemed like a throwaway thriller that you just watched to pass the time, but the cast. Guys, I cannot resist a movie with both Julian Moore and Gary Oldman, who's my favorite actor ever, even though he does have a habit of appearing in really bad movies that are based on books. But anyway, at the time of filming this video and probably at a time of uploading this video, the movie isn't out yet, so let's talk about the book. The protagonist of The Woman in the Window is Anna, a woman who is also an agoraphobe who lives alone in this huge house in New York City, and her only connection to the outside world are either an internet forum of fellow agoraphobes or her actual windows from which you can see the houses of the neighbors and sometimes take pictures of them. The story starts when a new family, the Russells, are moving into a house nearby Anna and Anna befriends Jane, the mother of the family who comes to visit her and the two chat and, as I said, uh, become friends. But then a while later, as Anna looks through her window to the Russells' house, she sees a crime being committed and, to make things worse, as she calls the police to involve them, Everyone, including the Russells and the police, claim that there wasn't any crime, there aren't any evidence of a crime. So because nobody believes Anna, because she's mentally ill and Anna is convinced that something is wrong and the family are hiding something, she decides to solve the mystery herself. This book was compared to another thriller called The Girl on the Train, which I also reviewed, and these books definitely have many thematic similarities. They both have female protagonists who suffered from some psychological issues and therefore is quickly labeled as unreliable. They both witness a crime that technically was none of their business and no one believes them, so they decide to solve the mystery on themselves. And both books are quick and easy thrillers that you can enjoy without requiring you to work too hard mentally. The Woman in the Window is technically a psychological thriller, but I found it very plain and not as deep as it probably wanted to be. Um, maybe I'm a snob, but I expect more from my thrillers. But generally, I thought the book was okay. I wasn't really expecting too much of it, and therefore I, um, well, I got what I expected. It's not a bad book, but it's definitely also not a great one, neither in the way it's written nor in the mystery itself and how it unfolds. And if that's enough for you to form an opinion on whether you want to read a book or not, then fine, great, you can leave here. Thank you for watching. Make sure to click uh, like, subscribe, etc. But if you want to hear me talk a little bit in more detail, yet no spoilers, about uh, what I think the book lacks, continue watching. I do like to start with positives, but I suppose that other than the fact that the book wasn't really bad, I don't have a lot to say here. Um, the book does have its boring moments, more on that in a second, but when it's going, it's very interesting. I suppose I also like the fact that we have an actually mentally ill protagonist. It shows how her mental illness affects her in more ways than what healthy people might have thought, and also how people just automatically label her as crazy and just assuming so many other things about her. And I thought that was a great concept. I also like the concept of the mystery itself. But now let's talk negatives. If you've heard any reviews on this book, I suppose the top point people make about it is the fact that the book is slow. And it is very at points. You see, since Anna is alone in the house, she barely has any human connection and she obviously doesn't go out, and the book spends a lot of time describing what it's like, this mundane routine that she's in with nothing really going on, and I get it. The problem is that, well, it continues throughout the book. 
I think there could have been a better way of portraying this repetitive, monotonous, lonely existence without dragging it throughout the book, which created just a bunch of very long, boring moments. And in the notes I take throughout reading, I wrote things like, I'm in chapter 8 and I think the story actually begins. And then, no, chapter 10, it doesn't. And the same as I read chapter 33. By the way, the book has 100 chapters, in case you were interested. And to make things worse, Anna, who tells the story in first person, reads like one of those people with no social awareness that just blabber on and on about subjects that only they find interesting and nobody else does. She really loves old uh, black and white movies and it's a big part of her routine but we hear about it way too much and in way too much detail. Also, these movies are important to the plot in a way that I suppose the author thought was very sophisticated, but I just felt were way too obvious. If you know your older films, if you know your Hitchcock, you will immediately recognize exactly how and why they are relevant to the plot. I, for example, was immediately reminded of the movies Rear Window and Gaslight. But I guess the main issue is that all this blabber and rambling is just filler for the book to mask the fact that there isn't much to it in terms of good plot. The setting and the mystery are interesting enough, but that's it. You don't even have a decent uh, investigation process. All we have is Anna reaching conclusions. She's absolutely sure that X is the criminal because but then there is a point where she sees this something that is nothing but a circumstantial clue and she is positive now that Y is the guilty party. Just like that, and, and that's it, she's convinced. And then there is the twist ending, don't worry, no spoilers, but what is a thriller without a good twist? And there are actually a few twists in this book and one of them arrives about three quarters into the book and so you know that there's more to it. Were we even supposed to think that that's it? Mystery solved? I hope not because even if I didn't know there were about 20 more chapters to go, there are way too many missing pieces for us to be like satisfied with this solution. But uh, let's talk about that three quarters in twist. First, it was pretty obvious. To those of you who've read the book, tell me, were you surprised or did you totally see this twist coming? Because I did. And secondly, instead of simply changing how we see maybe some characters or the world of the story, I felt more betrayed by the book and by Anna instead of a positive reaction for a good twist. And then there is the other twist, you know, the solution to this mystery. And again, no spoilers, don't worry about it, but I felt like some of it didn't really make sense. When we realized what really happened, some parts of it made me go, oh, that's why. But for the most part of it, I honestly felt like the author simply ad-libbed the ending to make the most shocking plot twist possible. But at least we do get an ending, so don't worry about that. All loose ends are tied in a very convenient way, you know? Uh, the villain ties James Bond up and explains his entire plan in, to make sure we know exactly what went on. Very considerate. Okay, I think I will just stop right here and conclude. I like more sophisticated detective books and therefore I didn't think much of this book. However, if you like The Girl on the Train, if you like your Karen Slaughter, your Gillian slash Jillian or whatever Flynn and other recent uh, popular thrillers, you will probably like this one. It's a cool book to pass the time and it has a great premise um, and it tries to do something really interesting. I didn't feel like it succeeded, but I can completely see how many people really love the book. You will have to pull through some long, boring parts, but just remember that around chapter, what, 35, the book really starts taking off.
So that was my review on The Woman in the Window and I feel like a huge snob, but you know what? It's my channel and my opinion, so... So guys, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please don't forget to click like to show your support and also to subscribe to my channel if you dare for more book reviews and other book-related videos. If you've read this book, please tell me what you thought about it in the comment section. So again, guys, thank you very much for watching and and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.